Hey everybody, this is Ben, and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. In this episode, I'm going to be going ahead and getting my uh, first Kethane scanning satellite into orbit. Uh, so we'll be able to check out uh, just around Kerbin here, just to look for any deposits um, around Kerbin. I can do so. I can do some uh, testing on uh, drilling and refining and such like that. Uh, this is actually post play commentary, so I am watching this recording back and commentating. Um, because I was, I'm doing a lot of time lapse in this one. Um, <laughs> put it that way. That cathane scanning is slow. So we've got a pretty typical launch. I've got my uh, cathane satellite there on top of my standard launch vehicle. Uh, it's got uh, asparagus staged, and uh, I'm just uh, just getting this into orbit. No trouble at all. It only takes a few seconds when we're going at uh, extra f extra fast speed here. <laughs> Coming up, just starting a gravity turn. Gonna pitch this over, and uh, you keep an eye on the uh, sp my speed as it swaps over from surface to orbital speed. There, you can see that uh, the velocity that I um, have as part of the rotation of Kerbin suddenly becomes apparent. I realize that I should have been burning at a slightly different angle for quite some time, but my uh, apoapsis is already um, up at. Uh, outer space height, so I'm taking a look at how my trajectory looks, and I've got a little bit of a sideways inclination there, so all of my further burning I'm going to be doing a little bit, as you can see, opposite of that uh, 180 degree mark um, from where my uh, prograde marker is. Um, you can see, you can hear a little bit of fast forward Kerbal tunes in the background there. Uh, so this stage is actually, surprisingly, um, I'm not sure if I made a little inefficiency in my launch trajectory here, that stage is not quite enough to get me all the way into orbit, but I've still got my final uh, orbital insertion stage, so just setting myself up with a fairly circular orbit here, and then we'll uh, line up on that node marker and uh, fast forward over to that point and circularize this orbit up. There we go, beautiful. And I have now, this is this is all uh, remote done, this is all remote tech uh, probe cores. There's, this is not a manned mission, so you can see on the map view any uh, communication, those communications lines of my satellite network operating. So I'm very happy that that seemed to work perfectly and I didn't have any issues. Uh, now that we're in a circular orbit, I'm no worried of skimming, skimming the atmosphere. I go ahead and deploy my uh, solar panels and I'm going to get this cathane scanning started. Just activate the sucker there, that's all it takes. And you start hearing little, little beeps. Little beeps. This, this is my first cathane uh, scan I've ever done, so I've got, got to do a little bit of experimentation here now that I've got it up and operating. Um, I have to say, as a little surprised to see that it was only scanning a single cell at a time. So my first thought is that, oh, well, I, I need to get this thing up to uh, up to a higher altitude over Kerbin here. That uh, my thought was that if I give this thing some more altitude, that the scanning beam might spread a bit more and I can get a, a little bit of a wider scan path across the surface, because if it's doing one cell at a time, this is going to take forever. Uh, so I go ahead and I boost my apoapsis up there to uh, just over 1100 kilometers. And I do have the medium scanner installed on here, and the maximum altitude for that is 1200 kilometers. So I'm going up to just about the max altitude for this. Oh, and then there's a little, little blip there. You can see where the scan path is broken that um, I was in the shadow of Kerbin for too long. My battery power ran down. So I'm just waiting for this thing to get out to the apoapsis to see if my my speculation is correct that I can get a wider scan path at a higher altitude. And you can see already that that is definitely not the case. So I instead settled on a altitude of just around 600 kilometers. Uh, it's just about half the max altitude. I figure that should give me a fairly fairly speedy orbital time, uh, you know, time 
that it takes to orbit the planet, um, while still keeping me mostly out of the shadow of Kerbin. Boost that up, and then we just gotta warp back around and bring that apoapsis down to circul circularize. And then, I can tell you, we are in for a long bit of scanning. <laughs> Setting up that node while I warp over, and I'm using the uh, the flight computer there to uh, point at my maneuver node. It's it's very it seems very similar to like what a mech jib uh, option to point at my maneuver node would be, but without the necessary necessarily having mech jib. I'm I'm one of those people who's minorly against mech jib. I just don't want to get lazy and start relying on it too much. That I'd, I'd rather have a little bit more of a personal touch in all of my missions. <laughs> So here we go, got my satellite into the orbit I want. Um, so I'm go ahead and breaking off that last stage, dump the satellite, and then I'll be able to take this uh, orbital insertion stage and deorbit this back to the surface of Kerbin. I don't need it on there anymore. And there I bumped the wrong RCS thruster and I nearly had a catastrophic solar panel <laughs> collision, <laughs> but uh, got lucky and didn't bump anything. <laughs> so just, Getting myself a little bit of distance from the satellite before I burn on my retrograde to, to deorbit. There we have it. Gonna go ahead, point, click on the retrograde pointer. Just make sure I'm lined up perfectly on there, and then go ahead and check out my map view and fire the rocket. Gonna just burn. I just decided to burn up all of the fuel. Just have this thing empty when it uh, burns up in the atmosphere. Don't have any any risk of propellants misting down into population centers or little kerbals. And I, I was going to real quick try to switch back to my satellite, but I've already gotten too far away from that. So. We gotta use the map view to switch back. That orbital stage will uh, crash down and I assume it disappears. I did not keep track of it after this point, but all that is left now is scanning. And there's my beautiful Cathane satellite. Uh, zooming in to take a look at those optics on there. That, that is a pretty pretty awesome looking little uh, part. I love all the different colored optics. Clearly, it's uh, scanning is doing some kind of uh, analysis of various light spectrums, looking for trace elements of gas in the atmosphere, perhaps, to try to determine where there might be Cathane hiding beneath the ground that is just very slowly seeping out. Uh, now here I'm doing a bit of a test to see how fast my warp can go, and you can see it a hundred times time warp there, I get a lot of gaps in that path, so I have to slow it back down to 50, and that's where I'm stuck. 50 times time warp, and then just a lot of waiting. So you can hear the, the blips. Uh, the difference between the blips <laughs> when there's no cathane versus when there, there is cathane. Cathane obviously shows up as green on the grid. And you can also begin to see how the path um, of my orbit is affecting the scanning pattern on the surface of Kerbin. That to start here, it, it crosses over. Oh, there was a bunch of cathane, yeah. Uh, crosses over its own path pretty closely. I mean, it's at the poles, that obviously can't be helped, but uh, as time goes on, um, we get to see that uh, it does diverge at a, a decent a decent amount each orbit, so it should have a very, very good coverage area. And so for most of the rest of this point, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this to the time lapse. Um, and it's just be a couple of minutes to watch the progression of this planet scanning. This is 
Uh, this time lapse, which will last, as I said, a couple of minutes, is actually several hours of gameplay, or, and it ends up being, I believe, nearly six days of Kerbal time. So, uh, enjoy. And so at this point in the scanning, as I said, after several hours of watching it time warp uh, while, you know, reading the Kerbal Space Program Reddit and so on, <laughs> uh, I decided that that was enough coverage for me to have a clear picture of where the cathane deposits were. Uh, I can see the poles are especially well covered. Um, the equator is actually also fairly well covered because of the way that the scan crossed over in that area. There's just a few spots, a few slivers in the... Uh, the, the mid-temperate zones of the northern and southern hemispheres, but uh, that, that deposit there, uh, that looks like the closest one to the space center, and uh, it's fairly large, so it'll be easy to land on. So that is the spot I am going to be doing my cathane tests. I'll probably have to do just a quick suborbital hop to get anything over there, uh, but it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue. I've got a good launch stage already. And I don't have to don't have to have any intentions of returning anything to the space center or whatnot. So just a quick hop with some parachutes to bring down the testing rigs. And so that is what will be happening in the next episode. I'll be designing and uh, learning about also um, my uh, the cathane refining and uh, drilling apparatus. So appreciate everyone uh, who's watched this. Thanks so much for watching my videos, and I will see you in the next episode of Kerbal Space Program.